Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we're making a homemade, super nourishing hair balm. So this is actually one of the very first recipes that I ever developed and published on Humble Bee and Me, and I really think it stood the test of time. In every area except for one, which would be the yield. <laughs> This recipe, as originally written, makes 100 whopping grams of hair balm. And while 100 grams is not a lot of, say, chocolate, it's a ton of hair balm. To give you an idea, this is the original. That's how much is left. Like, five years later, more than five years later. This is like so, so, so much hair balm. So in this video, I have taken that down and we are making one third of the amount, which is a significantly more usable quantity of hair balm. So just in case you're wondering what a hair balm is, it's basically a solid hair serum. So I find that hair serums, especially ones that are 100% oil-based, are really easy to over apply because they're liquid. You can get, you know, sort of a pool of it in your hands and sort of before you know it, your hair doesn't look so much better as it looks like you need to go wash it, which is a major bummer, especially if you were just doing your hair to get ready to go out and now, now it looks all greasy and sad. So I found that adding a little bit of wax to this 100% oil-based mixture makes it a lot harder to over apply. You can just kind of glide your fingers over the top of the balm and then work it through your hair. And so it makes it much, much easier to not apply much, much too much. <laughs> Hair balm is fantastic if your hair is dry or damaged or even just very long. I developed this recipe when I had really long hair. It was down to about the waistband of my pants. And understandably, the last couple inches of that hair was pretty dry because it was just very old. So in order to add a little bit more shine and suppleness to it and help prevent breakage, I would work small amounts of hair balm into the ends of my hair and brush it out with a boar bristle brush to give it a little bit more shine and bounce. The original also uses quite a few different oils and butters. And those are awesome oils and butters, but I do realize that having a really long ingredient list can be quite intimidating. So I have, in this video, tried my best to pare that down a little bit. So we have our, our standards, we've got some nice shea, some cocoa, and some coconut oil. But when it comes to the liquid oil, I've tried to give you a bunch of different options. We'll be using a total of nine grams of liquid oil, but there's some wiggle room in there. I've used broccoli seed, jojoba, and walnut oil but a little bit castor oil. But if you don't have all of those, you can feel free to sort of use more jojoba oil, or maybe you wanna use camellia seed oil instead of broccoli seed oil. There's some room to play there. You can do some research and find some carrier oils that you like the sounds of for hair, or maybe just take a look at kind of what you've got. If you're trying to replace the camellia seed or the broccoli seed oil, I recommend choosing something a little bit lighter, you know, faster absorbing, maybe like a grape seed oil or even a rosehip oil would be a good choice. But there's room to play and customize this to be awesome for your hair. The making part of this balm is crazy easy. We're basically just combining all of the butters and oils and the beeswax, melting that together. And once it's melted, we'll stir in our essential oils, pour it into a tin and you're done. <laughs> so something I do want to show you before we get started is how much you're supposed to use. Whenever I get comments from people on the original recipe saying like, I really like this, but it makes my hair so greasy. The problem is always that you're just using way too much of it, which is really, really, really easy to do because this stuff is super potent and you barely need to use any. So I've actually already made it. So we're doing this in reverse order. So I have here the spatula that I used to stir and sort of here's the remnants in the Pyrex measuring cup. And so when we're looking at the amount of hair balm that we want to use, I'm basically just going to kind of rub my finger on the spatula, which has, as you can see, basically like no visible amount. And so my finger now is just kind of shiny. And so I'm going to take that and work that into the end of my hair. I'm going back for a little bit more, but again, like there shouldn't be a, like a visible amount of product on your fingers. Your fingers should just feel like they have a little bit of oil on them. And then we'll start to bring that through, you know, the ends of our hair. And unless your hair is very, very dry or quite coarse, or if you have Afro textured hair, I would really recommend sticking to the ends of your hair where it needs the moisture the most. And then we'll use a boar bristle brush to comb through and really distribute the oils. So the reason you want to use a boar bristle brush as opposed to like a plastic comb or a plastic brush is because boar bristles are natural and they will help pick up and redistribute the oil. They'll actually absorb oil, which does also mean that you do need to wash your boar bristle brush you know, every now and then so that you're not basically making your hair dirtier with it. But boar bristle brushes are the types of brushes, you know, if you've heard those stories about women who used to 
clean their hair by brushing it, it would be with a boar bristle brush because you could use it to redistribute the oils from your scalp down the shaft of your hair so that you wouldn't have to wash your hair as often. All right, so there we go. That's all brushed in and you can see that it doesn't look greasy or oily or heavy, but that's because hair just really doesn't need that much, that much oil to really, really perk up and look lovely. So. There we go, that's how to use it. So let's learn how to make it. We'll begin by taking our heat resistant glass measuring cup and adding all of our oils, butters, and waxes. So we have 10 grams of shea butter here and I've used refined, but you could easily use unrefined. Five grams of cocoa butter and this is unrefined, but you could use refined if you prefer it. Five grams of coconut oil and this is virgin coconut oil, but if you only have the refined stuff, you can use that as well. And here we have four grams of beeswax, and this is unrefined beeswax, but you could definitely use refined if that's what you've got. Definitely noticing a trend here in terms of swappable ingredients. And in here we have a blend of broccoli seed oil, jojoba oil, castor oil, and walnut oil to total nine grams of liquid oils. So you can absolutely use other liquid oils. I'm trying to make this sort of as easy as possible for you so we're not using too many fussy ingredients. So jojoba oil is a great oil for hair, so is broccoli seed oil. I absolutely love camellia seed oil for hair as well and that's in the original recipe. And castor oil is also fantastic. So there's lots of room to customize this recipe. So now to melt everything together, I have a small saucepan here that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in it. We're going to pop our measuring cup in here and I'm going to go put this on my stove top over medium heat for about 20 to 30 minutes until everything has melted through. Once everything has melted through, you can remove the pot from the stove and then remove your measuring cup from the pot. Get that dry off here and we can add our essential oils. So for this hair balm, we're doing a blend of lemongrass, lavender, and rosemary. So we'll do about five drops of lavender, three drops of lemongrass, and two drops of rosemary. stir and we are ready to pour this into our tins like a little one ounce tin here and I suspect we'll have a bit left over all right just the weeest amount so not quite enough for another container but enough for a little test use when this is set up. So we'll just leave this to solidify. So about half an hour later and everything has set up really nicely. This smells fantastic. It doesn't have a really strong lavender scent, just a nice soft sort of indescribable lovely scent. So we can put a lid on there and we're done. So you can check out the consistency of it over here. You can see it's reasonably soft and spreads really beautifully. You want to use very little of it. That amount that I had on my fingers was probably too much for most people's hair, unless your hair is quite coarse and quite dry. But there you go. You just made some homemade super nourishing hair balm. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with amounts in both metric and imperial and links to the recipe on my blog. The recipe on my blog is quite a lot larger, so keep that in mind. The amounts will be about three times larger. So see you next time.